First of all, uh, I would like to acknowledge the ADC people, Dr. Uh, Ashraf uh, Ansari. Thanks for coming. And uh, well, first of all, also Dr. Sam Sharaf does not really in need introduction. Dr. Osam Sharaf, actually, he is a civil engineer, graduated from Cairo University. He went on to uh, Purdue University. He got his master's degree and PhD degree in civil engineering. And then he became assistant professor in Purdue, 1984, and went on also with his career. And he is now the professor of uh, transportation and traffic engineering in Cairo University. Dr. Samsharaf doesn't really like to be, uh, actually his preference is to be called the professor or, of uh, uh, engineering. But i just like to let you know just one sentence. In 2011, he led a group of uh, academicians, actually academic people, professors and so forth, and the youth in Tahrir Square. And he is the one who won during the 18 days during the revolution that emerged from the crowd. And the crowd actually put him, carried him on their shoulders. And he went from Tahrir Square to the office of uh, Prime Minister. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Prime Minister Hassan Sharaf, Dr. Sharaf. Rahim, Salam Alaikum Holland. Well, uh, I want to start by uh, thanking Nabak and, and uh, especially Dr. Muhammad Gamal for uh, giving me this chance. And um, I thank you all uh, uh, just attending at this actually after dinner. So I hope the things are not uh, uh, too uh, crowded for you. Um, um, See, since actually yesterday or last night and this morning, it was full of politics. So I convinced my, myself to have the, the presentation, you know, towards something other than politics. Um, uh, I tried actually that, but it turned out to be, you know, actually I'm, I'm fooling you. Okay, actually, I turn to politics again, but um, so uh, uh, let me let me go very quickly. The, the the title of the of the presentation is the change, and of course, some of the information or the ideas that I'm talking about applies to Egypt and other Arab Spring countries, um, and there is few issues that I'll address, but of course, there is a lot of issues. And I will leave that to discussion either tonight or actually through email after I leave. Uh, and as I uh, said, it's no details, but to, to, to stimulate discussion, actually. So there is a lot of issues that we can discuss, but let me, uh, this some highlights. The change. Of course, you know, going from the airport to the, to the, uh, to the hotel, actually the site, it reminds me with the good old days at Purdue University. So uh, this is the Purdue campus where I actually spent uh, quite time, quite a time there, studying master and PhD, and also teaching there for some time. Um, and as I said, you know, and I repeat what I have said, that that um, uh, I remember how we were received by our American friends, professors, and colleagues. And I, I don't think in any moment I felt that I'm a stranger. So again, I thank all my friends in America here that give us this chance also. Um, the, the, the presentation is actually two parts. The first part is called the change. Then the second part is, is some kind of personal views or feelings 
about some of these issues, the change. Okay. See, this is engineering, and this is my specialty, is asset management, pavement performance, or sometimes we call it decay or de degradation curves. This is very important in managing the assets. Here is just the, 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 uh, some example of these performance curves. The pavement starts, oops, starts new. Then there are some signs of degradation. And then it goes, if you don't do something here, then it goes all the way until the red zone where actually it is badly deteriorated. And if you don't do anything, then it will be completely damaged and you have to do something. Okay. Here, everybody is happy when the road is new, when the pavement is new. At this stage where some cracks, you have, you may fool the user, but you cannot fool the expert. Okay, the road is still usable. So the road is still usable and you can, you, can, you can fool the user because the user is not expert, but you cannot fool the experts. And this is a stage where actually experts say and thoughts is very important. In, the, in, the, in this stage, sorry, the red stage, actually you cannot fool the user also, you cannot fool the expert, but the road is still usable. Although the, 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 it's badly deteriorated, but still usable. At the last stage, you cannot fool the user, you cannot fool the expert, the road is not usable. What does it mean? In this early stage, you need to do something. To prevent it, you need to do something when there are some signs, okay? Is it clear or you can move it left? Anyway, okay? In the red, where actually you must do something, correct it. And if you don't do anything, then someone else will do something, complete change. I believe you, it is not engineering, it is actually real what happened. If you don't listen to the, to the people, if you don't listen to the intellectuals, you know, then things will deteriorate until a complete change happens. And that's why I call it the change. And I recommend for you, I'm sure most of you know it, a book called Who Moved My Cheese? It's a bestseller and actually it, is, it talks about how you feel and react to change. So change is not just in pavement. Actually, in even our political life, we should actually sense that there are some problems. Maybe regular people, they don't feel it, but the experts feel it. So this is the model. And as I said, the model, the problem that the model is repeatable. Like if you have the same policies and the same inputs, then the performance will be the same. Okay. So. What we should do, actually, we should do some preservation policy, like to keep as long as much, you know, the pavement in acceptable condition. And here is the representation of the preservation is actually, every time you feel the pavement is deteriorating, you do some prevention, you do some prevention so you can extend the service life, okay? Example for that, if you have a pavement with some cracks, so in this yellow or orange stage, then all that you need is actually to remove just very simple process, and this is we call it melon overlay. This is not very expensive, but if you leave it until it severely cracks and reaches the bottom, then what you have to do in this case, 
you have to remove the whole thing. Hmm? Ah, you have to remove the whole thing. Here, reconstruct. Here, if you spend one dollar here in, in the pre preservation of the pavement or maintenance, that's equal to four to seven dollars if you leave it until it's completely deteriorated. So the price of not responding to changes, not understanding changes is very prohibitive. And this remind me with the, uh, our uh, great philosopher late, Dr. Zaki Nagib Mahmoud, when he says that be wed to the actually people in the, you know, in the government or whatever, is, um, is that be careful from the whispering of the people. Be careful of the whispering of the intellectuals. Because this is actually means that there is something wrong. And if you don't respond, then you will end up by complete change. Okay? So I believe I try to make this analogy. So even if you decided to take the right decision and you change the policies, okay? Remember that changing the policy and having a new system, there is some kind of transition between the old system and the new system. Transition, in this transition, that means that you have to close the road and the level of service will be badly, very bad. Actually, you have to close the, 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 the road. So to move from, to move from this stage to this stage, from the old system to the new system, you have to be patient because you have actually to close. So there is a price to change. There is a price for change. And that's why people, you know, usually I said, you know, we have to be patient. We have to be patient to absorb because we cannot overnight change from this. It doesn't mean that we agree with, with, um, with a system, but actually we have to be patient because changing from an old regime that deteriorated to another system, another pavement system, okay, it takes time <coughs> and it takes understanding. Okay, so this is the first one about the change. There are some personal views or feelings I'll be talking very quickly about the revolution. Of course, when I talk about the Egyptian revolution, you can, you know, you can, uh, uh, of course, it's similar to situation in other countries, of course. Talk about the revolution, ch challenges and difficulties, Arab Spring, and the world, especially the West, and Egypt, the final one, Egypt, the present and future, and they call it a window for hope. Okay? About the revolution, I, I remind you with this figure. Actually, the revolution did not start on the 25th of, of, uh, of, uh, of January. It started a long time ago, few, some years ago, when there was science. You know, everybody feeling that there is something wrong. And a lot of writers actually say, accuse the Egyptian people, why they don't respond? And they said, we actually, we are, we are very lazy. So, and there is a lot of writers, and I personally participated in some forums, and we talked about that, but it was very clear that there is something wrong. Some in, in the political, economic, and social system. So leaving that, it was a price here. The cost here is not actually money only, only, but actually the cost of changing the system is very severe emotionally and economically also. So at this stage, there was whispering. There was, you know, few years before or some years before uh, 2011. 
and the the again I remind you with uh, Dr. Zaki Najib Mahfouz Mahmoud, the whispering started few years, and then it became a must. There is something serious happening, and it was reflected by the sixth of April, sixth April movement, sixth of April movement, and Kifaya or enough movement and others. So actually, the the resistance and 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 the opposition take certain forms because nobody actually take it seriously of this whispering of the people and 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 the the the, the case of uh, an anxiety of, of 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 different groups of people. So the environment at this period actually during this period was. The political environment was isolation. Egypt was isolated from the main circles, which is the Arab circle and African circle. And of course, the, the North circle, there was some kind of isolation, specific relations only. Social, there was some kind of disintegration. The, 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 the community and the society was actually divided to groups like the, the picture I showed to you where the pavement start to disintegrate. Okay, there is no uh, 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 leadership that connect people together. Um, and the economic, of course, what I call it here, fruits before roots. So there were people that, that in the macro level, the economic indicators was, were not bad, but actually the roots of the society the people, the normal people, the middle class and the lower class were actually suffer suffering severely. So this is basically the indicators or if I may call it in engineering terms or management terms, the KPIs, the KPIs or the key performance indicators of the system was something like that. And as I said, ignoring the whispering, ignoring the signals led to severe resistance here and then nobody took take care take actions here so it was the 25th of January so the 25th of January actually is accumulation of many years of 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 distress actually to the society again the problem that this model is repeatable if the same environment uh, indicators are the same, then the model will be repeated. Okay. Challenges and difficulties, actually, Dr. Mohammed he sent me an email, he said, please talk about difficulties. So I said, he's kidding, because actually I can, I can count two or three things that were not difficult. Okay. But everything else was actually extremely difficult. But anyway, Regarding the challenges, again, this is the, 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 the curve, which actually any new system, anyone in administration like myself, he has to keep it in mind. Uh, political, again, isolation. So we have actually to, re to, to return our relation to the Arab center uh, circle and Africa, and that's what I did with the uh, uh, visits, it started early visits. Um, social disintegration, that's why I was very patient to absorb people, to absorb people because people were divided and everybody thought that, that, that his rights are lost. So that's why they were very nervous. Economic, the environment, the fruits before roots, and Actually, the policy or the strategy is to preserve the economic from completely deteriorating. So, what, yes, there was, it wasn't very good indicators, but at least um, I, I, I had to talk about, I'm, I'm thanking my government, actually, because if you remember at 2011, no single commodity, commodity you know, you know, were, you know, were not available. Actually, we don't have even a single time electricity power off. 
So, because we, we, have, we used to have our meetings from 10 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the evening, in the night actually, okay? Uh, uh, to, and the core is how to absorb people, how to satisfy them, because actually they have the right uh, for them. But the, 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 the hardest challenge I faced, this is the really, the really, the really hard one, is this one. Is that those people, I felt committed to them. I felt that I have to, 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 to not satisfy them, but actually to return confidence to them, to let them feel that there's somebody is, 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 is thinking of them. They lost that uh, dramatically. Of course, there was also expectations, explosion, and a lot of demonstration and things like that, and, and I understand. This is legal rights to be worried. So that's why people used to say Assam is, is kind of uh, so patient. No, we have actually, we cannot deal with these wounded people severely. So, the, 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 as I said, the hardest one is really this confidence. How to work under this confidence is extremely hard. It's always you are blaming, I am blaming myself. I am blaming myself and connect, contacting my government to try to satisfy this uh, level of confidence. Arab Spring, the world, or the relation to the West, and this is also a request from Dr. Muhammad. And there is a lot of things we can say, but I'm asking the West, especially the West, don't zoom in the present. Don't evaluate the present situation in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Arab Spring countries, or actually in, in Arab countries as a whole. Okay, because I strongly believe that, that there is something with no return. Our young people actually, uh, uh, I call it sun rays and the clouds. Our young people established some issues that we cannot return, like people ruling. It is the time, it's a people era. Uh, the, the no godfather. No divine ruler, freedom of participation. These are the concepts actually that maybe, as I said here, the clouds can, cannot break the rays. They might hide them. Now, maybe there are some shadows, but actually these concepts will never go back. Egypt will never go back. This is something established through a blood of our young people and people. So uh, uh, it's not necessarily that it is being achieved in a complete and, and, and um, successful way, but these concepts actually are there, are there and we will never go back. Also, my advice to everybody, it's a worldwide, although of the clouds, in the clouds that we see worldwide, actually. Especially, of course, in, in our area, but worldwide. I, again, strongly believe that there will be a whole new world. I was talking this morning about that, the world of people. So, my advice to all countries to start to strengthen their relations with people. It is, it is people era. Now there are some confusion, but there is no way to go back to dictatorship. It is a people era and governments, especially in the West and USA, I ask them to be very careful to, to, to see and evaluate whom they are supporting. The first and actually the only should be the people. Now, um, the last one is, is uh, Egypt present future a window for hope. Uh, um, see, it's um, uh, this is what I call it a bird's eye view. Before I, I go, it's um, uh, I don't know. There should be something. Here. Okay. 
Anyway, uh, what happened actually, there were some groups, as I said, there was some kind of disintegration, and these groups actually unified during in Tahrir, during the 18 days, and, and, and also after that. So that, this is the real revolution, is not, is not uh, the, the, the unification. People get together. After that, people started to relax, and that made a void. And this void was filled by actually other groups. For example, when it, when it, when it was like in, in the 18 days, you can hardly identify a group. It's one group. All people are one group. After that, there was a tilaf, what's a collation? Is it tilaf mean collation? We reach about 180 collation. Do you know? So, so there was some, some forces really try to penetrate, okay? And this is the nature of, of revolutions, and that's why the voids actually, the number of divisions increased very much, and, but I believe there will be some day where there will be reconciliation, and from this point on to the future, to the future of Egypt and, of course, similar countries. Um, let me there was a slide but maybe I missed it but um, when you when you when I talk about Egypt and what's going on in Egypt it is like the birth pain pain I'll give you I'll tell you a story um, uh, an old man uh, was sitting in the in the garden like that and he saw a butterfly trying to get out of the cocoon, is that right? From a very tiny hole. And, and the guy was actually very, you know, sympathetic and, and he, he said, you know, I want to help the butterfly. So he took his pen and widened the hole to get the but, uh, butterfly out. And he did. And the butterfly, butterfly went out, but it didn't fly. She didn't fly. And he waited and waited, she didn't fly. And he was worried, and he asked one of his friends, expert in this area, he said, what happened? He said, you committed a crime. And he said, why? He said, because God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when the butterfly goes through this very tiny hole, if there is a strong, very strong pressure under his, so for some, what do you mean? What do you mean? Huh? Well, yeah, under the wings, and this actually helps the, the butterfly to fly after that. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us example that there is nothing for free. Freedom, freedom uh, needs um, um, a struggle and maybe there is uh, some pain. So if we believe in our freedom, then we should actually expect some pain. And that's what happened in Egypt. To get to the st full stability, then there should be some some pain, and that's what's happening. If you wanna actually just look from up, up, upstairs on, on on what's happening in Egypt. Okay, the future. Um, I selected when we are planning for the future. There are four steps actually for the future is, is uh, first of all, you have to think in a civilized way. Civilized not, does not mean polite. Civilized that you should believe or sh we should believe that we have a civilization. And I will explain that, that we should have in mind that we are the owner of a, of a civilization and we should work under this umbrella. To do that, we have to have a competitive production. We cannot work in the world with just the production to satisfy our needs. We should work in a production that satisfies our needs and also to compete with other people. And that requires the scientific thinking. Scientific thinking, including scientific research. The general um, uh, uh, knowledge of people. Okay? Part of it scientific research, 
Of course, we were talking yesterday about scientific research and today several times. So the base, base of our movement toward the, 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 the future is the scientific thinking, including scientific research, to produce a competitive production and to put us or actually to bring us our civilization back and this is the future. Let me say some, some words about the future. There is, there is a question of the future I strongly believe in. Is future is ability multiplied by desire, multiplied by role understanding. If any of these terms equals to zero, then the whole sum will be zero. So when we, when we plan for the future, we have to plan to see, are we capable, are we able, do we have the desire, do we understand our role or not? So what happened, this is just in one of the forums that we have with my friend, Dr. Ahmed Taymour, he's a poet, a poet and Shar, okay? And we discussed a very important issue is, is the difference between then destiny and future. Destiny is, is, is God's responsibility about his creatures. He knows everything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But future is, is our responsibility. The future, the future we make, the, there is a famous say, said if you want to know the future, make it. So the future is actually a human industry. Okay, and we have to think of that. Destiny is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala runs all the whole universe, you know, and knows in the future in what what will happen exactly. But we plan to what we need and uh, uh, inshallah we achieve what we need by the work, not by just uh, waiting. So future is a human industry, as I said, and this is when we work for the future, we should know that very well. I'm, I'm just saying, setting that in, uh, putting that in Arabic. This is from Ustaz uh, Kabir Said Hijab Ta'arafu, Shaar Kabir, Fi Ugnaya Fil, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's, um, uh, he, I, I'll say it in Arabic, he say, وَإِزَّاي نَنَمْ مِنْ غِيرْ مَا نَحْلَمْ بُبُكْرَ وَبُكْرَ دَمْ نَنْ يِيْجِ إِلَّا بِئْدَيْنَا Okay, we actually grasp tomorrow. We don't wait tomorrow. Okay? Ability. Egypt is the center of geography. Look. But not geography only. But when you, when you, when you review Egypt history, there is pharaonic civilization. Christian civilization and Islamic civilization. So actually Egypt is the center of geography and history too. So this is ability, this is asset, very important. Another thing in the ability, here is the, the dawn of consciousness by uh, Sir Ronald um, uh, Prestige, Henry Prestige. He said that the Egypt is the dawn of consciousness. That the idea of consciousness started there, back there in Egypt. So this is another asset that don't look at what happened now. These are things are hidden and they will come, you know, the idea of consciousness, the idea of principles, the idea of, of, of uh, uh, high uh, uh, emotions. Desire, I guess. Here is an example for desire. Okay? Here is when people, when Egyptian people want something, they, they do it. Okay? And this is an example of what Cairo, Al Tahrir, and Alexandria. The role understanding, we cannot actually plan for our future without knowing our role, our regional and international role. Let, let me explain that. Imagine that we brought um, um, Maradona, you know Maradona, okay? He has the ability. 
and has the desire and you put him as um, a goalie, goalie right? so he's, he cannot understand his role so his performance will be zero okay so we cannot actually this is one problem that that actually we underestimating the value of Egypt because we isolated Egypt from its circles whether it's regional or international I I never been in a place uh, and everybody actually is praising uh, praising the, the, the Egyptian especially location and capabilities but they are actually say things are difficult now well we agree that things are difficult but in fact this you cannot plan for the future unless you, actually, you know deep in your heart that there is a role there is a role for Egypt on the regional and international level. What's a civilized approach? What I mean is, I mean civilization. By, uh, I am actually, I like this book by Malik bin Nabi, he's an Algerian philosopher, and he said that the, the a product or technology, by the way, technology is a, is a product. This is a technology, this glass is a technology. Everything is, is actually either a human asset or man-made asset, okay, or natural assets, but the, 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 the products, the man-made assets, you know, these are the technologies that, um, that uh, we used to, to, to live. So a product or technology equals human or knowledge capital multiplied by resource or natural or man-made multiplied by time and I was saying this morning that I'm, I, I'm not worried about the human knowledge and just talking yesterday by how many Egyptians with, with, with you cannot actually you know there's millions of Egyptians that are doing excellent jobs in, all over the world at least and similar to them inside so actually, I'm not worried about the human or the, 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 the knowledge capital. Also the resources, and I, ask, and I, I was telling in this, this morning story how, how we have, have a lot of resources like mines and, and a lot of things. But what really bothers me a lot is time. Time. The, we cannot call ourselves as working under civilized umbrella unless we respect time and this is a problem we cannot really you know wait time to come actually we have to uh, you know riot the time and this is this is his his issue malik bin nabi he said you know if you have the best people in the world and you have the best resources in the world they will not produce anything unless we use the time. For example, uranium, that uranium, okay? This is a valuable material, and you have knowledgeable people that can deal with it. But if you leave it like that, it will take so many millions of years to be, uh, what, madda musha'ayan? Radiate, okay? But now, the scientists can do that in seconds, right? So the time is very important in the equation of of civilization and you you cannot call yourself a respected human being unless you respect time so my evaluation is really how people evaluate time how people do you know act on time not let time act on them the the last two parts is is the the competitive production and scientific thinking. The, the, the competitiveness, you cannot compete without development, and you cannot develop without science or knowledge. We, we mean by development, of course, political, social, economic development. So, uh, 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 to compete, you have to have a scientific, again, as I said, scientific approach or scientific thinking or scientific research that will move the development and then the development will move the competitiveness where actually you can compete. 
This is the definition of competitiveness by Michael Porter, which is actually the leader in, in competitiveness. He said that the competitiveness is how you balance between external challenges and your local values. Local values, religion, for example. You know, this is very important. That actually any country that jumped in, they have their own, maybe we differ with, uh, with their values, but at least they have their own values. So um, um, uh, here comes actually the values and the religion here to balance while we are working toward the external challenges. We should actually have our own values work on. I cannot leave without talking briefly about the, the project which is the development of Suez Canal Corridor. And as you can see, I, I put D in red because it is the project. It is not just the project, it is the project. And I, I just wanna, I want you to forget about numbers now, but the, if you wanna play important role in the global economy, then you have to have a say in the global trade. Global trade is, is global production and global consumption. For example, what we're doing now, I'm assuming that I'm the production and you are the consumption. Everything else is, is what is, is logistics. This microphone, this water, arranging, this is logistics. So we have a production, we have consumption, and in between there are trade. Can we, can we, in our location in Egypt, play an important role or not? The trade logistics, trade logistics are the maritime transport and other logistics. Maritime log uh, transport is nav navigable road, routes, ports and terminals, and maritime services. Why, when we talk about transportation, we talk about maritime only? Because maritime is actually carries from 80 to 90 percent of the, of the global trade volume. And it's about 70 to 80 percent of trade value. Okay, so the maritime transport, when you, talk, when you talk about the global trade, is very important. Okay, in, in 1950s, there was half a billion tons transported by sea or seaboard. Now it is 90 billion tons. So actually, there's an increased demand on the maritime transport. So if we can be good at maritime transport, then this will be good. That will take care of that. Other logistics, like, like uh, this is logistics center, for example. Other logistics, like, like um, uh, inventory, um, uh, uh, labeling and all packaging and all other things you know if you can do something about it then again you are actually now you are good in trade logistics as a well. whole trade logistics are about 20 to 45 percent of the income of a company 20 percent for large companies and 45 percent of small companies so imagine Imagine that the, the trillions of dollars, actually the amount of, of, of global trade is about 18, 17, 18 trillion US dollars. So imagine if you can save little bit in the logistics process, then the people will, will, will run after you. When we talk about the global production, either you produce everything or you partner, you be partner with other producers. The consumption, either you consume everything or you be nearby the markets. Now please take a look. What we have, what we are very good, is that we have the Suez Canal. Suez Canal is part of the most important, important waterway or water passage, right? And if we can, on this canal, Suez Canal, build hub boards, this is hub boards, or, okay, and then provide the trade with 
maritime services like uh, shipyards and uh, fueling and, and all, the, all other things. So, in fact, when you look at it, we can give ourselves five stars in the, in the term of the, the navigable routes, three stars in the term of ports and, and terminals, because we don't have real hub port yet, and give one star, we don't provide services. And one star here for logistics activities. So if we want to be a good part of the, the, the global trade, then we have to work on that, on that, on that. Regarding the production, how we can be partners? Actually, everybody, I was talking this afternoon, a lot of people, a lot of countries want to come and put their factories in, in this location because um, in, in um, maybe I have another uh, slide, but uh, the location of, of, of uh, especially Port Said is very unique in the world. So people, and the site, the, 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 um, the area of the, the Port Said is 170 kilometers, four times Singapore port. So actually it could be utilized. Again, about consumption. If you don't consume everything, you are at least nearby the markets. We have, uh, I'll say it in Arabic, then I'll try to say something similar in English. Okay. Port Said, for example, in the middle of the three continents, Europe, Africa, and Asia. So actually people can use our location. So the key word here is the location. So we have to sell our location. This is very important that actually everybody will not come to the desert, but they will come to this location to, to be a part, uh, partner in production and also be near the markets. This is the, we have to differentiate between three items here, Suez Canal Authority, Suez Canal Corridor, and Suez Canal Region. And this is, I'm saying that because there is a lot of confusion about that. Suez Canal Authority is the authorities that are responsible about trafficking. Okay, and nobody can actually take any decision related to them. The only people is the authority itself. The corridor, this is the authority. They have a lot of activities, but the corridor here, this is the most important thing. This is the Port Said, North Bull. This is, this is uh, the, the, whatever, uh, Northwest um, uh, Suez Bay, okay? These are very important as logistic centers. And of course, this is the Silicon Valley here, Silicon Valley. But this is the most important one. Here, see, here, Africa, Europe and Asia is accessible here. So there is a difference between Suez Canal Authority and Suez Canal Corridor. Here is the activities that we want to see in Suez Canal Corridor. This is these activities we are not good at all now. So this is for investment, shipyards, fueling, uh, some industries. Uh, this is logistics. Of course, a normal normal activities in the in the ports and the storage and everything like that these if we can invest then uh, uh, the potential actually for for more demand will be very high this is some 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 very brief to tell you the the potential of the project the income of current services in the Suez Canal is 5.4 billion per year. The global trade, global trade 17 to 18 trillion US, US dollar. The trade passing Suez Canal is from eight, about 9% of the global trade. The containers passing Suez Canal about 22% of the global containers. The value of trade passing Suez Canal is 1.5 to 1.8 trillion US dollars. So it's a, it's a trade passing through, just passing. Unless you utilize it, you process it, then you will end up with just, you know, minor added value. So the value of, glo of, value of global trade services, usually it's 20 to 25 percent, 
it's in the worldwide is 44.5 trillion USD. The potential value of the Suez Canal trade services, if we use the 10 percent, is about 0 0.4 to 0.45 trillion USD. So this is the investment opportunity. So if we catch 10 percent only of the 10 percent passing through Suez Canal, then the possible investment is 40 billion. If we catch 20 percent, 80 billion, 30 percent is 120 billion. So this is the invitation for investment. It is high potential and the demand is almost certain because this is the world trade. It has, they have to go, this 10% has to go through the Suez Canal. Uh, ports is from 3,000 to 5,000 US dollars. The reason is actually dealing with the, international, with the trade. It's just not, a, not to let it go. Is actually take it and assemble it and process it and so forth, so on. So, by just thinking of of moving from 200 added value to 3,000 3, added value, imagine the amount of return. Okay. The South Canal corridor again. There is some some uh, statistics here, but I will concentrate on this part. The, the economic study says that for port activities only, port activities, the return is about 7%. If we add the logistic centers and the, the zones, the, what you call it export processing zones, then the, the return is about 15 to 17%. Imagine 17% of what? Of, of this huge amount of, 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 of trade. So it is Again, it's very feasible. And uh, these results are based on 2009 statistics, but, um, but uh, I'm sure that the numbers maybe even would be better now because the demand has been increasing. This is what Mahathir Muhammad said. I'd say, that, I'd say it in Arabic, then I try to translate it. Translate it. He said that اعلموا أن مشروع ممر قناة السويس هو مشروع قرن 21 لمصر اقتصاديا والعالم أجمع والعالم أجمع سيستفاد منه أنتم أمام مشروع ضخم يوازي حفر قناة السويس من جديد أنتم مقبلين على ثورة اقتصادية حقيقية وعلى جميع التكاتف من أجل إنجاح نجاح ثورة That's what Mahathir Muhammad said that it, He said that this project is very important not only for Egypt but for the entire world because again, it actually can work positively with the um, uh, global trade. And he said that this is actually as if we are um, opening another Suez Canal. The project, why I call it the project? Because on the so social level, you can actually you have this issue of uniting people. And this is very important. And actually, I, I, I uh, call you that to, to, to help in this project by your ideas and, and, and um, uh, even connections. Economic, this will be a model for the asset management. This is important asset at how we, we manage it. Also, the relation between the foreign direct investment and the social justice. Usually it is a relation, it's, it's not very good relation. But with this project actually, with the world money coming in, you can have up to at least two million jobs in Port Said East alone, not even the South Port, okay? And restructuring the economic structure as you know that when you ask about the economic structure of Egypt, you say tourism, uh, industry, agriculture, but no one talked about maritime services, about logistics. So actually that will, uh, to give you an example, Singapore as a country is 100% dependent on the port. So actually when you add these activities to your economic structure, it will have uh, a good effect. Um, 
again, it's political. Uh, it's going to create some kind of a win-win situation between Egypt and the world, and this is very important. And this is not actually what I'm saying that that it is not just getting money. Actually, we are head to head. We are equal. You need me, and I need you. Okay, I know. I'm finishing now. Finally. Finally, uh, just want to add, this is the, I will end up with something for maybe for Arabic speakers and uh, speaking people and especially Egyptians, but uh, here is my family. This is me, my wife, my three sons, and this is my two granddaughters. Karim is the oldest one, we married and got two. Beautiful granddaughters, Hazen is the youngest but he engaged. Muhammad is still available, just in case of you. <laughs> so, so why I'm putting why I'm putting that? Actually, this is uh, this is my family, and sometimes I get mad. Okay. They drive me mad and get upset, but very quickly I go back to them and want to actually to, to give them to them a big hug because they present something sweet to me, right? And here is my country. Also sometimes I get angry and upset. But immediately after that, you know, I want to actually go and and play in the, in the, in the dust of my country. And actually at the moment, I'm getting to an aeroplane, I think, when I'm prepared. So, I'm now, but again, I want to go to my country and, and actually give her a hug because, because what? Hmm? There's something sweet. Yeah, hug her one, and that's my thing.